Well, the Premier is speaking, making an announcement. So let's listen in. So we'll, we'll get it done, all working together. That's the key thing. Let's work together. Hi, Premier. It's Chris Rochelle from the Toronto Star. Hi, Chris. Hi. I wanted to ask about the choice of York University for a medical school. I mean, it is $600 million in debt. Six of its 10 faculties operate at a loss. It has endless labor strife. There's actually a strike there right now. So are you and how are you going to address these issues uh, to make the med school successful? Well, I have all the confidence in the world in Dr. Linton. You could go to any area, any sector, any hospital or any uh, university and start poking holes in it. I, I'll tell you, York University is one of the top universities, in my opinion, uh, around the country. They deliver phenomenal students into different sectors, and I have 100% confidence in uh, in York University and, and especially up here in, in Vaughan. Wouldn't it be great if kids that grew up in Vaughan uh, went, to, went to the medical university and here worked here at uh, Cordelucci Vaughan Hospital? I think that's a, a great, great story. But um, I, I think the world of York. And back in February, um, Minister Paul Calandra promised legislation before the summer break covering uh, municipal politicians who harass staff. Can you just clarify if that legislation is still coming? Well, I'll pass it over to uh, Mr. Minister Calandra. So, yeah, yeah, thank you for the question. As I said at, uh, at the time in February that we are going to continue to work with uh, uh, the Attorney General to make sure that uh, whatever we brought forward was both uh, constitutional and, uh, and effective, uh, and we're continuing that work. Thank you. Brian Lilly, uh, Toronto Sun. If I could hear from uh, both the Premier and Minister Jones, and Dr. Leitner, if you want to jump in. Uh, part of the problem that we keep hearing about with graduating medical students is uh, either they leave to go somewhere else, United States, or that too many of the seats are held by people who are not from Canada and don't plan on staying in Canada. So as you announce this new medical school, as you announce, um, you know, continue to make announcements about TMU, how do you make sure that the graduates actually end up working in Ontario? We're, we're paying for a lot of the training. How do you keep them here? Uh, one way or the other. Well, thank you so much, uh, Brian, for that, because that is my number one pet peeve, as as the minister probably knows. You know, I, I just, I want to support Ontario students, and God bless everyone else coming to our country, and, you know, uh, someone from ABC country comes and pays a little more, and I understand that money pays for some of the, the, the local students. Uh, right now, I asked the minister, and I've been on this for a while, uh, you know, what is the percentage? It's 18% of 100% are foreign students coming in. But we, we uh, in my opinion, and we'll continue working with the ministry, uh, get rid of the 18%. I'm not being mean, but I'm taking care of our students, our kids first. These kids, and I talked to a lot of the parents, they have to go to Ireland or they go down to the Caribbean or they go to Australia or they go down to the United States. And guess what happens? They meet someone and they don't come back home. So and that, that's, you know, God, yeah, it's good for them meeting someone. Bring, bring that person back, back to Ontario. But I want 100% Ontario students, uh, you know, going to these universities. But, Brian, you read my mind. I have been on this like a dog on a bone, I'll tell you. So, um, Minister? Yep. Go ahead. So how do we make sure that the students that we graduate stay in Ontario? We expand primary care. And we've done that in February with 78 new or expanded primary care multidisciplinary teams. And of course, we've done it in last week's uh, budget, where over a half a billion dollars has been set aside to expand primary care. It means that wherever a new graduate wants to practice in the province of Ontario, there will be opportunities. And I will say, you know, working with the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, we have actually now in Ontario removed a additional barrier for internationally trained students to come who want to work and practice in the province of Ontario. So if you trained and, and uh, currently are in the US, UK, Ireland, or Australia, uh, you have one less barrier to make sure that you can come here in Ontario uh, with your family to practice medicine in Ontario. But I really think that the, the big piece is as we expand primary care opportunities, as we build out 
over 50 capital hospital builds, we are seeing that there are many, many opportunities for students who want to practice and live in the province of Ontario, and we will continue to do that under the leadership of Premier Ford. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much, Premier. You know, we went, one question that I heard over and over again from the government were exactly that question, because there was an appreciation that primary care was the gap that we were facing, and so how we were actually going to attract students into primary care and keep them in primary care and keep them in from the communities that we're recruiting them from. We looked at all new medical schools really around the world, to look at what needs to be done to actually enhance students staying in primary care. It starts right from what we talk about, what the identity of our school of medicine. Then it's about the whole admissions process, about how you are attracting the kinds of questions that you're asking. So you're attracting the students who want to be in primary care. And then it's about the curriculum. And then our students will be getting extended opportunities to actually work in primary care, which often and many medical schools because there's so many specializations. Back to yes, Premier yes, yes. Doug Ford, who's we been ours. speaking uh, we believe in at York University. Like we'll have more on this right now. The world. You get to go into a retail store, a big box store, and buy a bottle of wine with your steak and maybe a six-pack of beer like the rest of the world does. So that's what we, we believe in, and I'll always support Dr. Moore and the job he's doing. Uh, do we disagree? Yes, we, we disagree. I disagree with raging, uh, age, raising the age to 21. And one of my principles were, you know, these young young people, they put a, a uniform on and, and go fight for freedom around the world, uh, driving tra uh, tanks and heavy uh, military equipment, and again, putting their lives on the line for democracy, and they can't go back later and have a beer? That doesn't cut it. So uh, that was one of my uh, principles. And if they're, you know, if they're willing to fight for our country, they they should be able to have a beer at, at the end there. But uh, I'll pass it over to uh, the minister. You know, I think it's pretty clear with the investments our government has made, whether that's expansion in youth wellness hubs, whether that's new treatment facilities, or whether that's expansions of uh, rapid access, that we want pathways for treatment who have addictions issues, and we are making those investments. We'll continue to do that, but I think at the end of the day, we have to let Ontarians be adults, just as we see in other Canadian jurisdictions, and I think there is a better way than legalizing um, drugs and opioids in particular. Thank you, Brian. Hi there, Alan Hale from Queen's Park today. Hi, Alan. In the uh, past, uh, your government has uh, forced um, boundary changes on municipalities because you felt that they needed to build housing outside of their, like Hamilton, do, because they wanted them to build housing outside of their current boundaries, even though the city council wanted to do density inside its current boundaries. And I'm just wondering, now you're saying that uh, you you respect council municipal council decisions about where they want to build housing. I'm just wondering, when did that change happen? What spurred this sudden respect for the decisions of municipalities? Well, that respect started in uh, 2010 when I became a councillor, and I see the hard work they do and the mayors do. So I've never disrespected uh, municipalities. I've always worked with them hand in hand. We have a very good relationship. I always joke around with the uh, uh, Minister of Housing that I should be the Minister of Housing as well because of municipal affairs because I, I talked about 10 mayors every single day. They all have my phone number, so I've never lost uh, any respect for them. I like working with them. Uh, they, they have their job, and it's a very tough job. It's front-facing, right on people's doorsteps, unlike the, the, the federal government or even the provincial government. Even though Mrs. Jones calls for a pothole to be fixed, I'm, I'm there. I'm in. Uh, you know, you got to take care of your people. Well, that's it. That's our job. I, I don't put the federal, provincial, or municipal hat on. I, I take care of the people of Etobicoke North. In uh, Milton, there is a, a lot of people are wondering about what is going to go on with the uh, quarry in uh, Campbell, Campbellville. Uh, apparently, uh, Z Hamid, your, your candidate for the upcoming by-election, said that you told him last week, I believe, that, uh, the, that the quarry is not going to happen. And it's led a lot of people in Milton, uh, re voters, to uh, wonder why you're going ahead with an, an environmental assessment that you apparently have already chosen the outcome of. And even the, uh, the proponent, proponent 
opponent of the quarry has said that they're baffled by your uh, your approach to this. That if mm. you should, if you're if you've already decided the outcome of this EA, you should just cancel it, compensate them so they can go build a quarry somewhere else. And I'm just wondering why aren't you doing that? Well, aren't we so lucky to have Z running for us and and Milton? He was a counselor. He, he's well respected. And when I went door knocking, every single person knew knew him. So what a great representative for Milton. We're going to go through the process. We're going to go through the environmental assessment. And at the end of the environmental assessment, uh, that decision will be made. But I always govern based on the people. If people don't want something, then the government shouldn't do it. It's, it's pretty simple. And I think I've, I've proved that to the people of Ontario. If people don't like that decision, um, I'm not too shy to say, okay, let's review it. Let's, uh, you know, move a few things back and forth. That's the way I govern. The worst thing you do as a government or as a leader or premier or mayor or anything, dig your heels in and say, I'm not budging. And no matter what, that's, that's not good governance. It's not really governing for the people. You got to govern for the people. And that's the way I've done it. Our family's done it and our team's doing it. Ali Giasson from CBC News. I'm asking a question on behalf of one of my colleagues who's working on a different story. Okay. Um, the mayor of Whitby says that she's frustrated with the slow pace of the construction of the Lake Health uh, or Lake Ridge Health Hospital in Durham. She says your government is stalling the project. When is construction supposed to go ahead? And what do you say to the mayor's concerns? Well, I think that's the mayor that actually is getting collecting people's names, holding a lottery that if you give me your name and your email address, um, you get a free gym membership or you get an iPhone watch or you get all these little treats. Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> I'll ask the minister. I don't think that's proper for mayors to go out. It's like me going out to a community and saying, let me collect all your emails for certain purposes, and all of a sudden, I get these emails, I'm, I'm offering them watches, I'm offering gym memberships. Folks, that is wrong. You can't be doing that. Elected officials cannot be pulling these games. We've committed to make sure we have a hospital in Durham. We're going to go through the process. And uh, I'm not going to be bullied by that mayor out there that's constantly going, going out there and offering everything under the kitchen sink. And maybe the integrity commissioner should be looking into, are politicians uh, allowed to offer gifts if they get your email? It's, un it's really unbelievable. So uh, I'll leave it at that. But uh, the folks at Durham, we've shown them a tremendous amount of love. They'll be getting a hospital and we'll determine the site. Just have one more question from me because we have uh, some news that's been happening this morning and perhaps the Minister of Health would want to uh, give us an update if she knows anything about uh, the hospital outage at UHN and sort of the status of things right now. Yeah, thank you. So obviously the uh, the weather last night and today has, uh, the wind in particular, has made a challenge in terms of um, an outage that is impacting UHN, but I've been assured that they are working actively on it and I have all the confidence in the world that that will be resolved as quickly as possible with uh, Toronto Hydro and UHN. Thank you. This will be the last reporter. Good morning, Premier. It's Sean morning. from CTV News. How are you today? Good, Sean. How are you doing? Good, thanks. The question is, the Prime Minister uh, announced $6 billion in funding yesterday saying it was aimed at cutting red tape, building more homes and helping communities grow. What's your reaction and what does it sound, it sounds like the federal government is following your playbook and getting more homes built. Yeah, and thank you for that. You know, we have a, I'll work with anyone. We have a good relationship on working on a lot of uh, different items, and if they want to hand over $6 billion uh, across the, uh, the country, well, God bless them. I was talking to a few premiers last night about it, and uh, again, I just go back to what I believe in. Let the municipalities, let the mayors and councillors uh, decide where to build, what to build, how high to build. Uh, they know their communities better than anyone, and uh, but we're we're going to continue uh, giving them every tool on our side. The 1.8 billion dollars of infrastructure, strong mayor powers, a whole list of items to uh, get homes built. Again, that's all our goals. All all the federal government uh, is doing is trying to help, and the province is trying to help, and the municipalities are trying to help. It's all it's all coming together. Do you know where we need help more than anything anywhere? and uh, you'll see homes pop up like mushrooms. 
the Bank of Canada. You can't keep these interest rates at 5%. I'm telling you, it's going to hurt people so badly. In another year or two years, people can't afford an extra two to $3,000 when they renew their mortgage. You have to drop the interest rates minimum down to 4%. You get it down to 4 3 3.5%, you'll see homes pop up everywhere. And it allows uh, the, the builders to go out there and get funding to build homes as well. So this is, we're all pushing. Now the Bank of Canada has to uh, make changes. But folks, thank you. This is a fantastic announcement. And again, I just want to thank everyone for being here and, and all the leadership through York and our ministers and, and the mayor. And this is what happens when we all work together. Incredible things like this happen. And uh, again, I just want to thank you. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, we've been listening to the Premier uh, speaking to uh, reporters in Vaughan this morning.